everybody. My name's Alex. I work at ThemeCo Building Pro, and I've been really excited lately about the possibilities of our new Looper feature. And I just wanted to um, take you through a couple different examples of how to use the new custom Looper, which you can find under the Looper provider. And it, it, it's based around this concept of a hook and parameters. And so we're going to go through some examples with the end goal being um, accessing this data in a Google spreadsheet and then outputting it on the page. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit longer. It's gonna be a little different than some of the other videos on the channel. Uh, I am going to be coding all this live and in, well, in real time. And um, you're gonna see me struggle through writing some PHP code to get some of these things done. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's part of the process of development and um, just excited to dive right in. So if you've not uh, used loopers before, go ahead and watch some of Corey's videos on the channel and you can get a basic understanding of how they work. I am assuming you know kind of how to work with recent posts and at least the static JSON. So, um, yeah, let's get, let's get started. The first example I want to go through is how do we randomize a list? And we're going to do that by taking this looper list baseline. And I'm going to go to the list item, which is the provider. I'm going to edit this JSON. And we can see all these list items. Um, first, second, third, and this is built by um, dynamic content saying, get me the text looper field. And then for this number, it's saying, get me the looper index. And so this is always a numeric list, um, but what if we wanted to randomize these and keep you know, the numbers always ordered like that? What we can do is wire this up to a PHP function. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this JSON and take it out. And then I'm going to set this type to custom. And we're going to add our own hook here. I'm going to call it shuffle um, and go to params and put the JSON back into the params. And I'll explain why that's important here shortly. But before we can um, do anything else, we need to create this hook in the back end. I'm going to save this page and go to the front here so we can just refresh this to see our changes. So to create a custom loop where we're actually just using a WordPress filter, I can do add filter, CS, looper, custom, and then anything after this underscore needs to match the hook. So that's going to be shuffle. All right. Um, let's split this so we can see it a little better. Do shuffle. And now I'm going to write a function in here. And every hook needs to return an array so we can loop over it. Uh, the way WordPress filters work is you're going to have a function that has an input, and you're going to always return something that overwrites that input. So if I added multiple functions to the same filter, they'll all get a chance to run and manipulate that. So we only need to write one. and this isn't going to do anything right now. It's set to shuffle if I go over here and refresh. This is just an empty array. So we need to get those params, which are stored here. To do that, we want to tap into the second argument of this looper, which I'm going to call it args, and then tell WordPress that we want two arguments. Um, and now this is actually what we can do. We can just return args. And what that will do is it'll get us kind of back to that static list again because the arguments are coming from that params editor as an array and we're passing them back through. So I know that's not super useful, but if you start to do things in this function like shuffle, now we can change that data to be whatever we want. And I can keep refreshing this and it will randomize that list over and over again. You'll keep seeing these numbers, but the content will randomize. So that's the first super basic example. Um, another um, interesting thing that we can do with loopers is we can return posts and let's make another one. We'll leave this one here. 
We'll make another one called looper custom post query. Watch this. If I just do get posts, and now we take this, we're gonna hang on to it. Now what we're doing is when we call this on a hook in the in the the builder. Uh oh. Let's quit that for now. Um, when we call this, uh, we'll be able to get a, an array of posts. So I can go back here and let's trash this guy and get a posts list. This is currently using the recent post provider. I'm going to set that to I'm going to custom. I'm going to set that to post query. And you'll see it's just going to give us the same thing we had before. We're basically right back to where we started with recent posts, but now we can do anything we want. So I can do something like offset is one. Save this. Let's go check this out. Did I not save it? I should probably click save. There we go. So now it's skipped the first post. I can do offset two. And there we go. Now, even more powerfully, what we can do is we have this. So what if I go here and I do that? We're back to um, the original list, but now I can go here and I can start in the builder affecting the WordPress query. This is really helpful if you want to build out very custom things like text, like deeply conditional taxonomy queries or custom meta ordering, all kinds of things. Whatever you can do with the WordPress query function, you can build here, pass in to get posts in a custom query. You can even like write an SQL query in this using the WordPress database um, classes and return an array. So there's all kinds of interesting opportunities here that um, we probably haven't even scratched the surface on seeing what people are going to do with it yet. But now let's get into what we are here for, which is the Google Sheet. Now, the method I'm going to use, I wouldn't really recommend doing this in production. Um, it's a bit hacked together, but it's a, it's a fun little example. It would be better if you use the official Google Sheets API um, that's just a bit more involved and requires setting up some permissions. So instead of doing that, I'm going to use this web publishing feature. Um, I'm not really sure how reliable this is to um, do in a more permanent fashion, but at least it, it works and we can use it as a test case. So if you want to really pull from these, I'd recommend looking into how the Google Sheets API works and use that. But Let's try this out and see what we get. So one thing I did earlier, I don't know if you noticed, but I do have this little comment. Um, and this string is a format for how to get JSON from a spreadsheet that is published to the web. I just published it. So if I replace these stars with my spreadsheet ID that you just saw me copy out of the address bar here, I should be able to get some really ugly data. There it is. Um, now we got to figure out how to use this and this, uh, I did this once like a week ago and now I'm going to have to refresh my memory on the fly trying to do this again, but we'll get there. Um, first thing I want to do is make this a little more readable. This is a good one right here and make pretty copy this. That is all right. Um, here we go. Beautiful. So I can kind of see a little bit of structure here where I can. Here's my um, here's my column information. So we're gonna have to decipher this, and we're gonna have to write a function to pull all this in. And I'm just kind of scanning it and. Um, trying to mentally digest what I'm even looking at here, but I'll figure it out and we'll, we'll build something that will loop over this. So 
what we do have. We have a URL. Um, we have this endpoint gives us this ugly beast. And what we want to do is get that into our builder. So let's make a new one. Um, I'm going to call this HTTP. And um, go back over here. And I'm going to trash this. We're going to start over. And I'm actually going to show you this interesting tool that we built in that lets us get debug output because it's difficult to keep track mentally of what you're even looking at here when you can't inspect the data at each point along the way. So we're going to set up a little bit of tooling to help us do that. Um, let me go here. I'm going, I want to go to this row. We'll turn on our provider. We're going to set custom to HTTP. And then I know that um, I've got this URL. Let me copy that again. Not sure if I had that. And that 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 can be a parameter. Um, we may want this looper to work on many different URLs. So I may want to create one looper function that works on um, multiple sheets. So let's set that as a URL. So now this is a little more reusable. I'm going to save that. Um, and then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a raw content in here. And I'm going to do DC looper debug provider. Um, I think that's the right one. One second. Go to the front end and check this. That's not it. Oh, did I typo that? Yep. Freaking out for a second. There we go. There's my little spider. Um, so this little guy will tell us what kind of looper we're working with and what the current data is. So we've got no, no data. That's okay. We're going to put some data in here. And along the way, we're going to be able to start seeing this come to life. And we'll be able to, before we even design anything, um, we're going to hopefully see this array as something usable. And then we'll go ahead and create some kind of example around it. So um, go back to this provider, just check this one more time. I've got the URL passed in and I think that's all we need right now. So we can, I like when working on custom, um, really any kind of code, I like to work on the front end just because it removes different, um, different steps. And I know that my code is running once and it's running exactly on this page rather than waiting for the builder to reload. So I'm going to stick around on this page. Uh, we need to return something. So let's return an array, um, return result. And then just to see if this is working, let's return. Just some kind of example here. OK, there it is. So our first item is an object that has hello and world. So we know that's working. Um, now what we want to do is make that HTTP request. So I have URL as a parameter. So I'm going to do this. URL equals is set args URL. If it's set, I want it. Otherwise, no. And then I'm going to do if URL. What do we want to do? We want to make a request. Um, request equals WP remote get URL. Um, of course, I could have just typed that, but all right. Now we've we've just fetched that data, and now we want to do something with it. It's going to be this big ugly 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 object as well, so I can show you what that looks like, and then we'll kind of work backwards. all kinds of stuff in here. Um, but it looks like we do have that data. I can see oh, here's resource one. So we've got something. Um, but we want to do a little bit of error checking. Anytime you do a remote get, this could fail. So we want to make sure we handle that. So I can do if not is WP error request. Then we're going to keep going again. And um, now what we need to do is response equals JSON. 
think it's WP remote. Um, retrieve, retrieve body. And then we're going to pull that off the request. And then JSON decode takes true because we it'll return an object unless you pass true. And now it's going to return an array. So now if we dump this out, see what we get here. We should get just the JSON. Okay, great. Now we've got the JSON. Um, one more thing I want to do. Sometimes if this fails, JSON decode returns null um, if it fails. So I want to do like response. If the response is an array, now I can set my result down here. I'm going to set that to the response. So what's happening is um, I'm taking this. Actually, we have to make sure before we do that, we get a specific part of that response. Um, where's my pretty JSON? So we can't just use this. This is a big object. We can't just return it. Remember, we have to return an array from the provider. So I need to find something in here that I can return. There's me. Um, I th here, entry. I think that's what I want. So what we want to do is return response entry. This is where it starts getting a little bit, um, a little bit in the weeds. Like this isn't very reusable. I just made a decision that now I'm tying this function to a particular data structure. So it would make more sense. And let's just do it real quick. What if I set a key here, or let's call it a path called this entry. It's better to abstract these things out sometimes if you're going to use them in multiple places. So URL and then path. So now I can up here, um, we'll set this to like that. So what I'm saying here is if we've set the path param, we're going to get that value out of the response um, before proceeding. And because I'm only using this here, I'm actually going to define it here. Now, if I go to the front end of my page, I should see what we get. Hey, look at that. Um, that's our entry, I believe. Feed. Oh, it looks like we might not have the path working. Oh, I need to save this. Uh oh, undefined array key entry on line 30. Where's line 30? So I did something wrong. Let's check this. Okay, it's actually feed entry. Okay, that's two levels. Um, I'm going to save some time. I'm not going to write a function that's going to get into this and then go into that. Usually, you could do that with something like feed dot entry like dot notation but we're gonna trash that and go back I'm not um, that's another exercise we could do another time so we're gonna say feed entry and I'm just going to directly pull this it doesn't I'm not super happy about it because now I'm getting that I'm hard coding this information into the function so we can't really reuse it but I'm just going to get this example working. I'll take this out, save, and let's see what we get now. There we go. Now these are cells. This is where we're, we're really getting to the good stuff. Um, we're looping over cells now. And what we need to get out of this cell is this right here. Actually, let's see. It looks like this is one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around how this is structured a little bit. Um, a cell has, let's look at this over here. <clears throat> Bear with me. Um, 
where's entry here it is entry Not the content. I think that's like a row. This content is almost giving me the whole row. Looks like something doesn't feel right here. Not getting the. Don't seem to have a way to access um, the cells properly. <laughs> what if there's another feed? Nope, that's not it. Is it cells? Oh, here we go. I think this is what I want. Um, let's try this URL. Google has two different ones. I think this is the one we need. Sorry about that, but uh, I did say we were going to struggle through this. So, Let's try this link, save it, refresh this, and um, here we go. Now we've got cells, so there's 20 of them. Let's just see, we have 20. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so this is five by five by four here. Um, that's 20 cells, so now we can, now we got it. Um, now what we need to do is we need to map this data and we're going to write a map function to do that. So um, what I want to do is this is a little bit different, but I'm going to make another looper of the same type. And I'm going to give it a priority of 20. So instead of um, ideally, this HTTP function would be a little bit more reusable. So I'm going to pretend that it's reusable and we didn't have to do this hack. And I'm going to say if is set, I'll, I'll explain how this works in a moment. Let me get it scaffolded out. If is set args transform, transform, you can name this whatever you want, but I like the word transform since I'm going to be transforming this data into um, really just want an array, like a list of the cells with each item kind of showing ID, title, last updated, and download URL as something we can work with directly. So we've got to write a function to transform this. Um, so I'm going to say if is set args transform. I'm going to switch based on that. And I'm going to give myself some room that I could potentially write several different transform functions. So if it's going to be, let's call it a map Google sheet Oy. um result equals we need that function let's go ahead and make it result Okay, here's what we got going on. Um, when you add a second hook to the same, a second filter to the same hook, it will run this one first, then it will run this one. If I set this priority to 20 instead of 10, that means this one runs after. And what's going to happen is this hook is going to run, it's going to get that information. It's going to pass it back. Then this hook's going to run, and it's going to say, hey, do you want me to transform this? And I do. So to do that, we're going to add another param here called a transform. And I'm going to set that to map Google Sheet. Save. Now, just to test to make sure this is working, we did it right. Um, nothing. Not Things should happen. Actually, it should break because we're not returning it. Let me return the input. Let's just make sure this is working. Nothing should happen right now because we haven't changed anything. It's all still here. 
So let's just say that this array, we let's pretend we did something. Okay, now we've effectively, we've moved the place where we're gonna start talking to this data into this function. Now I can start to map this. Um, and this is gonna be a little bit of trial and error. Um, try to figure out how to wrangle this information. Actually, we're, I need this guy to be pretty printed now since we changed the feed URL. Pretty print JSON. Let's try this right here. Too small. My eyes can't read that. Make pretty. All right. Remember, we got the feed and then we got the entries. So what I care about is all of this stuff. I wonder if I can collapse this, copy that, and then, yeah, we can look at it in here. So each entry has an ID, has a category, updated, all this stuff, but what it has is this thing called a cell, and then it has this right here, the cell, and then the this T variable. So let's start. Oh, it actually looks like content is here as well. So content and T, I could probably use that. Let's just make sure that's what we want. Content, T, yep. Let's start by making a function that gives us all the cells and um, just passes back this content. It's not going to be very helpful because notice how these are all in a list and how the system is giving it to us is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's giving them to us in that order. And we don't really want to, we want to be able to combine them, but we're gonna have to start with something. So let's get into that. Um, an array map function. We need to do like cells equals array map. I'm gonna take function and I'm gonna take the, um, input here just this oh you know what I can do light bulbs um, let's do this let's move this that I was worried about earlier we'll move it into this function um, so now we can just pass back the response and now this is back to being a little more pure and that we can reuse this multiple times. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Yay. That's good. Um, so just to recap, we're getting that big, ugly JSON object. We're sending it back. It's getting piped into this function here, and then it's getting sent into this function. And now we can talk to it here. And so this is our, our raw data, which is here. And I'm grabbing the feed and then I'm grabbing the entry. This, we know this is an array, so this array map function allows us to operate on every cell of that array. Now I want to get the content of that cell. So I, what was it again? Um, oh, over here. Content and then T. So return cell content T. And then let's do return this. Let's see what this does getting somewhere refresh this oh there we go this is looking way more usable we finally have something that we can work with now uh, we still need to build a little bit of structure around this because notice how we're getting everything sequentially and this is what I was trying to explain earlier probably not super well but we have a we have 20 cells and we just have them in sequential order and that isn't very helpful because we want what we want to do I want to strip away this header. So that's four cells we want to get rid of. And then I want to um, map it into a uh, set of objects that have these as fields that we can loop over them. So let's figure that out next. Um, let's see. I think I need some parameters in this function. So let's pass that here. And then let's go to map Google Sheet. Pass that in. So now we can tap into the the arguments, the params. Um, so we, what we need to define, uh, 
we want to split this up into chunks of one, two, three, four. So because we have four column headings, that's going to be a setting we want to define. So let's add that here. I'm going to go like, let's call it row width is four. Save this. Go back here. Um, and then what I want to do is, where's this? We we'll use this little format. And then row width. And we'll give it a default of, um, I guess, one. So if they don't, if nothing, if this doesn't get set, it at least doesn't break. Um, and then just to make this a little more user proof, let's go max one. So that means you can't set a negative number. This just kind of, this kind of stuff helps when you're writing functions. So if um, somebody changes something, it doesn't do super weird, unexpected stuff. I've just kind of made this a little safer to work with. So now we have these cells, and now what I want to do is map them into, let's call it rows. Um, and then I think I want to, I need to strip off that first row, which is ID, title, last updated, and download URL. So we can do that. Um, and those are going to be like the key names. So we're going to use those. Um, Array splice. Array splice will take an array. So we've just uh, we just made this array from this input, and we re returned all the cell content. So I've got this list of twenty cells, and I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to strip off the first four. Um, so now, if I return cells, like it's actually removed that from the array. So if I go over here and refresh, I think we should see those four are gone. Okay, that's what we want. We do want to see that happening where we've removed these because these aren't really helpful um, in the content itself, but we do need those for something else. So now let's while let's loop over this while we have cells. Um, I'm going to make a new row. And then this is always going to be four. This is always the row width. So that's four wide um, for each keys as key. Uh, what's that WordPress function? Sanitize title? Let's try this. Um, row. Gosh. Um, equals. We want to pull this cell off. I think it's array pop cells. So this function will get the element at the end of the array. Okay, uh, that's the end of the array. I want the other one is shift. Array shift. Where's my helper? There he is. Shift an element off the beginning of the array. So this is going to start taking this list of started as 20, then we took off four, so now we have 16. So this loop is going to say, um, while we have cells, keep looping over them. We're going to start building um, building this list of rows, and I'm going to take off four cells, and I'm going to stash them in this row, and then... Um, Oh, we need to return rows here. And we're going to append this new row Oops. to there. Let's refresh this. And if this works, I can explain a little more of what we're doing. It doesn't work. Uh, WP sanitize. Let's Google that and see if I did something wrong here. Oh, it's just sanitize title. Okay. This function, um, notice how... Uh, where was I? Notice how these are kind of uppercase and then they have spaces. I don't really want to rely on that, so I'm going to clean them up a little bit using this function to change. It should like hyphenate them and go all lowercase. Let's try this again. Oh, there we go. Check that out. Um, so now we have one, two, three, four. We have, this is it. We have the data we need. 
So here's the ID, the title, last updated, and the download URL. Same for all of them. Um, and let me, I'll recap just how we got from here to here. And then now that we have this, we can go build something with it. So we'll do that next. Um, okay. Starting from the top. Let's go in here. We created a custom looper called HTTP. We're creating these parameters called URL, transform, and row width. This function here says, oh, look, there's the HTTP um, custom looper. We're going to see if it has a URL. Yes, it does. We're going to go get that URL. We're going to decode the JSON, um, which is basically all this mess. And then we know that's a real, real object. Um, we're going to pass that through. The next guy here is going to say, hey, do we have a transform method? And we set one, right? We set that to map Google Sheet. So it says this argument is equal to map Google Sheet. Yes. We call this function on the result that's passed through, and we override it again, which lets us run this guy. This takes the input feed entry array, or uses array map to pull out all the content, and then strips off the uh, basically the row header, builds all that data up as this thing called rows, and that goes ends up here, which ends up here, which ends up being what we have. And now we can using the looper. Um, dynamic content keys, we can start pulling this out. So let's do that. And then I want to add one more, just a little bonus um, optimization to this at the end, because I don't know if you realize this, but every time we refresh, refresh the page, it is retrieving that um, data and it's firing a remote request. So that is going to make the page load a little bit longer while we wait for that data from Google. So we're going to optimize that. But first, let's let's loop over this and see if we can get this working. I'm going to use my handy-dandy screen float tool to kind of keep that on the screen. And um, let's see. Here's the row. How do I want to do this? Um, let's move this provider up to the section, and then we'll use the row as the consumer. So... We go to the row, grab all this, turn this off, go to this section, looper provider, custom, HTTP. Um, there we go. Perfect. So there is our provider settings. If I go to this, let's jump into this row. We have this little debug helper. So now I can kind of, let me rename this to debug. And then we'll get a new row. Well, and then let's make it, just for the sake of this example, I'll just do one of these fields in each column. And then you can use your imagination to think of some design that it may go into. Let's get a text element and I'm going to do looper field. This one will be the ID. Okay. Um, that's not working because we didn't turn it on. This row should be the consumer, consume all. So already, we've got our IDs here. Um, let's go to this one. Title. There it is. Last updated. Is that not right? What did I do wrong here? Oh, there it is. Okay. I got those out of order. And 
the download URL. And let's do this one as a button because that would be the right example to do. Oh, that's tight. And delete that guy, go to this button. Oh boy, I broke something with inline editing, so we'll do it down here. All right, let's save this, check it out. There it is. We've got, notice the browser is updating those URLs. We have this whole list. We've looped over it. Um, you could do something to add column headings if you want and reference these yourself, but we we have this all working. We I know it's been a long road here, but we took a Google Sheet. We wrote all the code to output this list, and there it is. So um, that is the meat of the video. Um, feel free to stop now, but I'm going to take a couple more minutes and make that little optimization to prevent us from making this remote request over and over and over again. So what I would do here is um, we know there's a URL. That is the unique bit of data that we want to fetch. So that is something we want to create. What um, I'll call it a cache key because we're going to cache this response in the WordPress transient system. So let's call it like custom HTTP. You can call this anything you want. I'll call it cache. And then we're going to append a hash of this URL. Um, and like if I dump this out right now, you'll be able to see what this looks like, just to kind of get an idea. This is what it's going to be saved as in the database. And the reason we use a, a hash of the URL is because if I use this looper on 12 different pages and it's all in the same URL, I can just grab the same cached value. But when the URL is different, that's when we want to change the cache value. Um, so now let's try to get the data. So cached data equals get transient cache key. So now we have the data stored here. This should be something. So the way this get transient function works is if nothing's stored, it will be considered false. So if cache data equals false, we want to do all this stuff, right? So if it hasn't been stored yet, we're going to actually go fetch it. Otherwise, if it is stored, we can just do this. Um, salt equals cache data. So now this should work. We should still, yep, there we go. It's still working. Um, we're not actually storing it yet. We're just We've tested that we can see if something is stored. So now let's cache it into the, um, the WordPress transient cache. So I'm going to do set transient cache key. Um, goes key and then result. So we'll cache that. And I'm going to do. Oh, let's set up a. Let's set up one more argument real quick. Um, I'll just do an example. TTL, this is called time to live. Let's say one. And then um, TTL times WordPress has a constant called minute in seconds. So what this will do is it's going to cache this for one minute. And if it's um, been over a minute, we're going to check again. Um, and let's make the default. Well, let's make it a parameter. So I'm going to grab this little format. I'm going to say TTL if someone said it. Um, oh, we want to do this again where we can't set a negative TTL. So let's say it has to be at least one minute. Now what we've done is by default, it will cache this value for one minute. Uh-oh, undefined variable cache key. Oop. No D. There we go. Uh, now it's working. Um, and now what we can do is we can pass this TTL. In as a parameter. So if I go to my section, inspect this, and I set a 
let's put it up here with the URL since it's kind of related to that um, provider. Let's set it to like five. What this will do is it'll say, get me this URL, cache it for five minutes, and transform it, and here's the row width. So we've added that last little optimization. This is all working. It's loading a little bit faster, um, but that's more important when you have higher traffic on a site. You don't want it to have to constantly be making all these network network requests, especially if it's um, to services that may be a little slower. Google Sheets is pretty fast, but you don't know how fast the resources you're going to be working with are. But yeah, there it is, guys. We did it. I know that was a, a long road, but we got this working. And um, that is how you work with custom loopers. Thank you. Thank you.